You're listening to the Business Brain Food Podcast. Welcome to the Business Brain Food Podcast, the show business owners listen to when they want to take their business to the next level. Head to businessbrainfood.com.au to catch up on past episodes and access show notes from every episode. Now, here's your host, Ben Futrell. Well, welcome back to the Business Brain Food Podcast. This, my friend, is the podcast that is 100% devoted to taking you and your business to the next level. And the good news is, doesn't matter whether you're just brand new to this business thing, so maybe you're just scratching that entrepreneurial itch, or maybe you're like myself and you've been in business for a long, long time and you've got the scars and the wounds to prove it. No matter what, there is always something new we can do to learn about taking our business to the next level. And today is absolutely no different. I will have Philip Cooch joining me very, very shortly, who is a uh, young uni student that ended up in a donor nut store. Uh, not, not that well planned either, but we'll talk to him about that very, very shortly. Before we do that, just a reminder that today's show is brought to you by MaxMyProfit.com.au. The team at MaxMyProfit are helping you build the business you imagine. So if you went into business imagining that it would be easier than it is, maybe it would be uh, much smoother, much more fun to run, maybe make you more money and have you working less hours, maybe rely on you having to be there less uh, so you can enjoy the money that you're making with your family and going on holidays and, I guess, in, in enjoying things that you love about your life and your business doesn't let you do that, then you need to talk to the people at maxmyprofit.com.au. The team at MaxMyProfit will help you build the business that you imagined. All right, uh, so today we've got Philip Cooch coming on to the podcast. Philip is a 25-year-old entrepreneur who started his own donut store business when he was in university. He is now a franchisor and has franchised his stores and owns three stores and is, uh, also has a booming online donut gift box delivery service. Welcome to the show, Philip. Hey Ben, how you going? I'm very, you, very you summed me up well. <laughs> Fantastic! I'm glad I did. Uh, you know, my team do a bit of research and give me some information. I, I've got a few other, you know, um, deep dark secrets about you, Philip. So get ready for that. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit. Should I be a bit worried? I'm a bit scared about what you reveal. <laughs> not, not at all, mate. Not at all, mate. Uh, <laughs> you know, I guess. Let. How about we start by giving the listeners a bit of an insight into how this happened? Because I did allude at the beginning that it sort of happened by accident, but you've ended up with your own donut store and now a thriving online business so maybe talk us through how it happened well if i had to sum up my whole journey in the last few years it's always been unplanned i've never been good at planning anything um and i stumbled across this business purely by accident as well um it happened about four years ago when my parents you know they've always wanted to go into business for the first time and they found this great little local bakery that you know sells bread and pies and um, just sandwiches and stuff, just your local suburban bakery. Um, and they were really excited about signing it and then um, purchasing the business. And um, right before we were about to take over, my dad got sick and his arthritis um, you know, meant that he couldn't bake anymore. So that made things a bit tough for our family because we already had signed all the papers. Um, and then I really had no choice but to just come in and just step up and help my family out. And then four years later, um, a lot of things have happened and we've now got three stores in Melbourne and and like you and as you mentioned before, now a booming online business as well. Yeah, well done, mate. Congratulations. So that sounds like uh, you've taken it and you've run with it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So what were you studying at university? I I was studying journalism and marketing. Um, which proved to be really useful in 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 you know, opening a bakery. Uh, you might be surprised because um, I think yeah, just social media and marketing just came naturally to me. And yeah, and now now I'm doing my masters in data science, so I'm still studying still. Um, but yeah, having a good time while I'm at it. Yeah, great stuff. And, and when you were going through university, did you? I mean, or before that, did you have any have any other businesses or business ideas or or th- thoughts of going into business? Uh, I've always actually been very business minded. Um, when I was 15, um, I used to love writing and I've always wanted to start a blog. So I actually started this, um, I used to be obsessed with um, Korean music. Um, so when I was 15, I started this K-pop blog, writing just about you know new music updates, new music releases. Um, and then before I found out, um, you know, the blog just blew up and we had you know, more than four, five million visitors a, a, a month. And then I was selling all advertising spots to all these big media companies in Asia. 
Um, and yeah, I did that for about five years before I started this bakery. And I think that gave me a lot of the foundation to mm. uh, start this business. And that was uh, Hello Hello K-Pop, wasn't it? Hello K-Pop. Yeah, that's right. Hello K-Pop. Yeah. And is that business still going? Did you sell it? What, what happened to that one? Um, I... It's still going. It's still running. Um, it's still going strong. Um, I I don't. I'm not involved in it anymore. Um, so I've I've taken more of a backseat role and advise. Um, you know, on on the, the direction where the, the website goes, but I don't take much part in it. Um, our co-founder Adrian, he runs it now, and he's doing a great job. Yeah, great stuff. Now you're saying before that um, you know you were, you were studying journalism and marketing at university, and that was really. Uh, helpful starting a bakery, but I'm sure there's plenty of bakers out there be going, how could journalism help me start a bakery? But then you alluded to the fact that it helped you with your social media side. How important has it been for you growing that bakery that you have been able to get on social media and, and spread the word? Um, I think for me, I've always um, been the type of person who always wanted to do you know something different. Um, and so I think having that journalism background and having that marketing background um, I knew that, you know, for us to succeed, we had to do something that, you know, all the other bakeries in our area weren't doing. Um, so for me, the, one of the key reasons why our business had grown so much was because we were being able to, you know, pitch stories to journalists and get free PR. Um, and yeah, that's been, a, you know, a key growth um, for us. And that's, we've been doing it for a couple of years and we still continue to, you know, pitch stories to people and just trying to generate some free PR without spending too much on marketing. Um, but in terms of social media, um, I guess like I, I'm, you know, the social media generation. So we kind of know what our peers want. So we just kind of create strong content that, that engages people and that stands out from or everyone else that, that's, you know, prom, you know, trying to promote the same message. Yeah, so good. And so that free PR, so that journalistic course you did, or oh, that degree that you were doing taught you how to approach journalists? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I know, especially you know this day and age where it's like in a 24-hour you know media media cycle, you you kind of know that you know journalists are always out there looking for a story. Mm. Um, so you, you kind of just kind of find an angle that that hasn't been told yet, something that it might be interested in, and then you just kind of just pitch it to them and see whether or not it sticks or. And then if that doesn't work, then pitch a different story to a different journalist and see, you know, who picks it up. And eventually you'll, you'll get something, you'll get an angle that, you know, that they're in, they'll be interested in. Mm. Now, now this bakery, when you took this bakery on, was it like a traditional bakery? Because it certainly isn't now. Um, was it, was it the, your traditional come in and get a loaf of bread type of bakery or was it doing unique things already? It was your it was your traditional uh, you know bakery. So you know we still do a lot of this you know everything the same still except for you know the donuts of course. Um, but yeah, you you know people come in for a pie, people come in for you know a sandwich, some bread rolls and loaf. Um, so yeah, your typical suburban bakery. Yeah. Okay. And and what what was the was the name of the bakery the same now? Or was it because it's now is it Gold, Goldie Lux? Is that what it is? Have I pronounced that right? Goldie Lux. Goldie Lux. Yeah. So it's called Goldie Lux Bake Shop. Yeah. Okay. And was that, is that what it was called, or did you name it Goldilocks? It was. It, it was already called Goldilocks um, Bake Shop. Um, I actually, funny story. I actually hated the name. Um, it's it's grown on me now, um, and I really wanted to change it when we took over the business. But I thought, you know, the business had, you know, all the locals already knew what the name was. Um, but once uh, we took over, I realized no one actually knew what the name was. So I missed my <laughs> opportunity to change the name. How funny. And obviously it's a play on words, isn't it? So they obviously like Goldilocks maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, it is. It's a play on Goldilocks um, um, and the three bears. The three bears coming in and eating yeah. you. I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I when I saw the name, I thought, I wonder if uh, Philip came up with that or is that uh, something that you inherited? So that, you've answered that question. So tell me, um, you know, you've gone down this path of the donuts. You know, that's uh, an interesting market to go in. We've seen some big players fail in that market. So I, I'm going to say it's a brave move. Um, you know, what, what, what drew you down that path? Um, well... I, I was looking for a pod, product that, you know, something that was, um, I guess, authentic in our, in our DNA. So something that we could bake in our stores. Um, so 
And at the time when I was looking for something different to do, um, donuts were kind of really taking off in, in Australia and Melbourne in particular. Um, around that time, um, we had in Melbourne, we had a big Nutella donut craze. Um, so that's when we first started. So we started making some Nutella donuts because there was such a big demand for it. Um, so we were making, we used to make only about three Nutella donuts a day. Uh, and then it went up to 20 to 100. And then that's when we really realized, you know, there's this big demand for, for donuts. And, and if you look at in countries like America, for example, you know, donuts are integrated into their, their culture and everyday life. So I think that's something that, you know, we're moving towards closer to. Um, although we do have a lot of like, I guess, designer donuts, which is kind of what we do. Um, but yeah, I guess like we just kind of look at trends and see what's, what's happening and, and try and ride the trend and predict what's going to happen next. Yeah, which, um, which, is, which, is, which is a good way to run a business because if you look at what's going on and you look around you, um, you know, because I think, and, and, you know, it's so important to be unique. I mean, have you put the effort in, I mean, you, you saw this trend with the Nutella, but obviously Nutella is only one part of it now. And I believe you made a, was it you that made a one kilogram Nutella treat that looks like a big heart and made it gold? Yeah, so we, we, we recently, right before Christmas, we released a, um, a Belgium chocolate heart which was filled with a kilo of Nutella. Um, a and kilo that of some, Nutella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a feast. It's a feast. And we do, we do recommend you know, sharing it because it is quite a handful, as you can imagine. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you're doing some pretty unique things. Now, is this, is this part of your master plan to stand out from the crowd? Because, I mean, when you think about bakeries, you think about, you know, loaves of bread, pies, sausage rolls, you know, your bakery is your bakery, you know, some bread rolls and away you go. Um, but yeah. here you are creating something quite unique. Did you, is this quite on purpose or did you just stumble across this? Tell us a bit about your marketing plan. So our marketing plan is um, we don't want to come off as an intimidating brand with all these crazy ideas. Um, we still want to stick to, you know, our core products, which are, you know, um, you know coffee. I'm having, you know, a nice old jam donut, a nice Nutella donut. Um, and these these products that we come up with, the crazy ones, they're purely just to you know generate interest in our brand and generate interest in our business. Um, and we find that you know a lot of people find us through you know if we get written up in uh, you know like Harold Sun for example or Urban List, um, they they discover us at you know one of those outlets and then they see our full range and that's how we create people uh, repeat customers. Yeah, it's by having that. Okay. And, and you know, from a, a perspective of building your business long term, what was it that made you decide to go down the franchising route? Um, well, for me, I, I consider myself, I consider that, you know, I have a lot to learn as a business owner and as, and as, a, um, and as an entrepreneur. So I want to build, I guess, like a team of people who, who can help me grow, not only you know, personally, but as a business owner as well. So um, I found this great franchisee who's run, you know, cafes and um, run, who's had her own, you know, businesses before. And she's, she's now, you know, part of our team. She's given me so much great advice and it's been such a joy growing the business with her and I'm learning so much. Um, but that's one of the main reasons why I decided to go down that route um, because, I, I have a lot to learn and, you know, I could, there's so much people I could talk to that I could learn with um, and I want to share the journey with more people, I guess. Yeah, okay. And so what, what's the goal for this now? You want to be like a, a nationwide chain of, of uh, Goldilocks? Uh, we're, we're trading very carefully. I mean, we would love to grow, have more stores, but um, as you mentioned before, you know, we've, there's been other giant chains who have risen very fast mm. and also collapsed very fast. So we can't, we're, we're analyzing, you know, the mistakes that they've made and we're trying to make sure that we don't go down, down the same route. Um, but, yeah, we would love, of course, to have more stores, of course, um, expand overseas potentially. Um, we've had a lot of interest in, you know, in people trying to take us overseas, but we, we've been quite adamant to make sure we build the foundation before we expand um, beyond our borders. 
Yeah, really important to do that. What? Um, so tell me, what are some of the failures that you've had? I mean, you've, you've mentioned there you've still got a lot to learn, and and this is really, you know, this is quite a, um, a a a big step for somebody who hasn't been in business before. Besides mm-hmm. your, I mean, you had the K-pop, but this is a little bit different to that, isn't it? So what what have been some of the failures that you've had along the way, and what have you learned from that? Um, I think a lot of the failures I've I've met over the last few years have been more of a personal. Um, I've the thing I, the one thing I learned about running a business was that I needed to have a clear distinction between personal life and working life. Um, they they seem to integrate a lot in my you know together a lot, and it makes it makes it makes life a lot harder when you you know when work is constantly on your mind. And I found that you know the times where I've really taken care of my mental health. Um, and my, you know, physical well-being. That's been the times where my, my business has grown the most. So, um, yeah, trying to have not too much on my plate and trying to make sure I have time, put, you know, some personal time for myself have been probably the biggest learning curve I've I've had the last few years. Yeah. And so what are some of the sacrifices you've had to make? Like you just mentioned there that you, you know, you're thinking about your business all the time. Have you found that you've had to make sacrifices that you didn't expect? Yeah, um, well, a lot of it is social, a lot of social, a lot of social aspect of it. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of my friends are you know going out, you know, drinking, partying, and you know, experiencing you know what it's like to be in your twenties. And I've you know I haven't really had that, um, and I've had to turn down a lot of you know social events because I was just too tired from work. Um, and you know, you know, and after a while, that that does really does take a toll on on your, you know, your mental well-being because you feel like you're missing out. You feel like you're working so much. And, yeah, you just reach a point where you feel like you've overworked. So um, I think it's really important to have a plan, you know, an action plan where you take care of your, yourself as well because, you know, if you're not taking care of yourself, um, you're not going to put great work into, into your business and, and growing your, your success. Yeah. And so what, what motivates you? What, what is it that keeps driving you? Um, well, for me, I, it goes back to my family's history. My, my parents were refugees from Cambodia. Uh, and so, you know, for us to be doing this has been um, a really big opportunity for us to make, you know, create a new life for ourselves. Um, my parents came to Australia with only $500 uh, and my dad came as a refugee. So, um, for me, that's always been in the back of my mind, and I just, you know, I I want to do them proud, uh, and I want to make sure that you know where we live a better life, and and you know, for for us and for the future generations of our family, and so yeah, that that that's what's keep, keeping me going at the moment. Yeah, it's important to have those uh, those reasons why, isn't it? When you get out of bed each morning and you you have to drive forward. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us a bit about the, the business then. I mean, and you came across it and you've created these new ideas. Um, I mean, what, what is a docent? I mean, you're a docent? Is that, am I pronouncing that right? <laughs> a, a, a docent. A docent. So a it docent. Sounds a bit, yeah. So it has that bit of that French, that French ting to make a bit um, gourmet. Um, but it is, it, it's, our, it's our version of the um, croissant donut. So more popular, popularly known as, I guess, the cronut. Um, but ours is a bit different in the sense that um, with the cronut, you, it's traditionally very, very flaky throughout, you know, the, throughout the whole, you know, donut. Um, whereas ours is a bit of, um, you know, you get the flakiness of, of the croissant on the outside and then the soft, you know, soft dough of the donut in the inside. So you get, you really get the experience of both a donut and a croissant. Um, but yeah, that's what we we specialize in, and that's um, I think that's what's differentiates us from you know other donut brands, um, which is our descent. And and people always hear what a descent is, and they always be like, "What's a descent?" And then that's and then they come and check it out, and then yeah. Now, is it true that you've got one that is twenty four karat gold? Yes, real twenty four karat edible gold, um, which you can eat. Um, and and before you ask it, yes, if you do eat, you know, edible gold, you do poop out gold. Um, <laughs> you must get that question a lot. <laughs> oh, on, a, on a daily basis. <laughs> so I'm looking at a picture of it here, 24 karat gold magic 
uh, <laughs> I want to say it right, Desant. Um, yeah. It's with my best French I can do. Um, and the, and it's got like a gold icing, which is real 24 karat gold. So there you go. Yeah, real 24 karat gold. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and where, do the, where do these ideas come from, Philip? Are you the ideas guy or have you got someone in your team that creates these? Because you've got lots of really cool looking creations here. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I do come up with all the ideas. Um, I'm, I, I do have a lot of help from my sister. Um, <laughs> but I think in the family, I'm more of the creative person. So... Um, and I get these ideas simply just by, you know, going out and seeing what, you know, what you know, other people are doing. So I go out to eat at restaurants and, you know, eat a, you know, go out to different bakeries and just see what, what inspires me really, really. Um, but yeah, it, it really comes from anywhere. It's, it's almost like an art, to be honest. Yeah. And have you found that, you know, you're, you know, waking up in the middle of the night thinking about a new flavor? Is that happening? Oh, I dream about it, you know, when, when I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah, um, now, from a, a, a business point of view, do you have a business plan? Are you working to a plan? Has someone helped you do that? Or are you just going by the seat of your pants? You said earlier that you weren't any good at planning. So I'm interested to I'm know. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think, I think a lot of um, business, especially small business owners can relate. Um, because you're on the ground doing everything, it's really hard to um, sit down and really plan what you're going to do. Um, and the the last few months, I've been I've been a bit, bit better now. So I've I've got myself in a little office now. Um, so I know you know what when I, when I go to work, I have to work. Um, so that's given me more of an opportunity to plan on what I want to do um, with my business. Um, but basically, my vision for the business is to um, really look at the bakery because it's been such a you know steady business area for us. Um, the business is always the bakery's business has always been consistent for us. So I, I've been looking at you know the, you know the products that have been doing really well um, in our bakery, and and I really want to work on expanding that and I guess like just scaling that to to more stores really. Um, so yeah, some of the stuff I identified were you know focusing on you know coffee, which is an everyday item. People come back for coffee, um, bagels and sandwiches, which you know people come in before work, after work um, to get a bagel or a sandwich, um, and donuts, which is you know people come and get it for a treat. Um, and I guess yeah, focusing focusing on those three things, um, that's the direction we want to take our business, and it's different to what. Um, other donut brands have done in the past and I think that oh, I, I really believe that it's going to work so, mm. um, so yeah yeah I can definitely um, I can see that the, the uniqueness as opposed to what other donut places have done in the past the other thing is that I mentioned at the very beginning of the intro is that you've got a, a booming online donut gift box delivery service what made you decide mm-hmm. to start that I mean you know having a, a brand new business as a bakery is one thing uh, but an mm-hmm. online business is totally different, isn't it? So, <laughs> what what made, yeah. what made you take that step? Well, the first reason why I wanted to do that was because um, I wanted to you know, make sure that we were, you know, not only just a physical brick and mortar store, but also a fully you know e commerce store. Because especially in this day and age, you know, you, you have to be online, um, and you can't really just sell individual donuts online. Um, so one of the things we've realized was that, you know, people were buying our donuts as gifts um, because, you know, they're, they, 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 I guess they're an easy present. Um, so we've taken that, you know, that, that feedback and that um, demand and turned into these gift boxes. Um, and so we packaged them with, you know, some, with our donuts, we packaged them with some lollies um, and we, people are able to personalize it and we do gift wrapping and stuff like that. Um, and then we deliver it right to the recipient's door. Um, and then, yeah, it, it's been, we've, we've been doing it for about three or four months now. Um, and we've already fulfilled more than a thousand orders, which is insane. Um, and just on Valentine's Day alone, we did about 200 orders, which is crazy. Yeah, which is incredible. Well done. Well done. And what, how, how are you marketing that differently to the, uh, the bricks and mortar store? Um, so with our um, online store, we do, um, we do a lot of like influence marketing. So we send them out to a lot of inf- like, I guess like um, people with big following on, you know, social media mm-hmm. um, just to get that word out there faster. 
Um, we also do a lot of um, retargeting ads on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so a bit, a bit of like stalking people <laughs> and convincing them to buy our products. Um, but yeah, we, we, we do try to think outside the box as much as we can. Um, and we try, especially for the e our e-commerce store, we try to think of an e-commerce business um, when we're doing that. And then when it comes to promoting our brick and motor store, we put on our brick and motor store thinking caps on. So we try to make sure that our marketing is tailored to different parts of the business differently. Mm, yeah, great stuff. And I'm, I'm interested to know because they, they, you know, some of the principles of an online store can be really helpful in a bricks and mortar store. You know, have you taken some of the, the principles and put them into your, your bricks and mortar stores, for example, things like collecting a database? Yes, um, we, I, I've, I've really focused on that the last few months. I've learned the importance of um, having a database. Mm. Uh, it makes life a lot easier if you have a database and um, it really does empower, you know, your marketing. Um, but, yeah, we've done a lot of, um, you know, email database building um, and, that's been, and that's really proven to be, you know, a really strong tool in helping us, you know, generate more sales for our online store. Yeah, and I think that's um, it's a great lesson for so many listeners to take because, you know, your bakeries that are not online and people are coming in, mm. uh, by building the database, it's, it's actually going to help you also then promote your online store, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And you don't realise how easy it is. Like we get, you know, um, customers sign up to our newsletter and stuff you know, from our Coffee Loyalty Club tablet, which we have, you know, at all of our stores when people buy coffee. Um, people can sign up for our newsletter through our live chat on our website. So it's, it's really easy. And, and I can't believe I took me this long to realize how easy it is to collect yeah. and build your database. Yeah. Which is interesting because if you, ask, if you ask a lot of bakeries, like if we went and surveyed all the bakeries nearby and mm. said, why aren't you collecting people's names, what do you reckon they'd say? They'll be just like, oh, what do I need it for? <laughs> Yeah, what do I need it for? Or who's going to give me? No one will give me their names. But the reality is, if you ask, you get the you get the database, don't you? That's right. That's mm. right. Yeah. Yeah. Now you mentioned there before about influencers, and some of the listeners may not understand that. And I guess this is one of the good things about being a twenty five year old is you're very connected with social media. Um, you know that idea of sending out your donuts to influencers. How, how do you go about doing that? Do you just send them a box and say? You know, it would be nice if you eat these on your Instagram or how do you go about making sure they share it? Um, well, we, we, we get asked a lot about um, from influencers. So influencers are people who have, you know, big following on Instagram or Facebook or so any social media. Um, but yeah, we get a lot of people asking us if we can send free, free donuts because, you know, who wouldn't love a free donut? <laughs> um, and then, you know, in return, they'll just give us, you know, a shout out or a, a post on their page which is like a free exchange. You know, we give them free products and they give us a free, um, I guess, like review on the product. Um, but otherwise, we do sometimes reach out to specific influencers if we think they suit our demographic um, and who we're trying to target. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a mix of giving up, getting, getting free promotion and also paying for it. Um, but most of the time, it's very low cost. And I think it's very important to also, I guess, like get authentic voices to help you know, build the trust in your brand as well. Um, and, yeah, we try to pick out influencers who are trusted by their audience um, just to make sure that it builds our credibility as well. Yeah. And besides uh, influencers and your database, what other, what other things do you do to market your business that work well for you? Are you doing flyers or anything like that or radio ads or anything like, like the traditional mm -hmm. type thing? Um, we, we have a Channel 7 segment airing in two weeks' time. Um, which is pretty cool. Very cool. Um, so we, yeah, so we, we got approached by the producers of one of the shows. Um, and then we, we, we actually got the promotion for free because it was a sponsorship deal. Um, so we actually got the, one of the shopping centers that we were in to pay for it. So we kind of just told them, you know, if we film at your shopping center, we'll give, you know, we'll make sure that it's mentioned in the segment that you have to pay for it. And then they'll totally down for that. So we got a free TV us segment from that which is pretty cool um we did some flyers just before christmas um we've done a few podcast interviews um we've had a, a radio ad before as well um we kind of do everything pretty much i think we've tried everything and we kind of know what works and what doesn't work for us yeah so you're um, testing yeah. everything you're testing and measuring so you know where your leads are coming from 
That's right. Yes, yeah. we we do a lot of testing. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff. I think that um, you know, as a young guy who's in this first business, and you've now got the franchise. Now, tell me about the franchising. Does did you find that an awkward thing to do? Was it an easy thing to do? It was. Um, I find it really awkward to be honest, because so we we at our first uh, donut store at Eastland Shopping Centre, um, we had one of the girls that worked for us. Her name was Vanessa. Um, so she was our, our barista. Um, so she was making coffee for us and we were there as a, ca- as, as a casual pop-up shop for about six months. And we were, our lease was about to finish. So I told her, hey, just so you know, you know, we're about to finish up here. Um, and she was like, you know, oh, why do you want to throw away this perfectly good store, you know? Why don't you just, you know, keep, keep going? And I told her, it's too much, my, you know, too much on my plate. I can't do everything at the moment. And then she proposed the idea of franchising it to her. And I was like, what do you mean? And I was just like, I couldn't believe like she was actually interested in investing in our business. Um, and I kind of just, you know, brushed it off as a joke. Um, but she kept testing on me about it. And then um, sooner or later, we, 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 we ended up signing a, fr- um, a franchise agreement. And now she, she actually runs that store for us now and she owns it now. Um, and yeah, she, we had, a, we have a, such a great relationship with her and she's um, teaching me a lot and I'm learning a lot from her. So it sounds like you've got Vanessa to thank for the franchising of your business. Yeah, that's right. She, yeah. it'll, if, if, if we end up franchising 30 stores, it'll all be because she pushed me to yeah. do it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, if, and, and if you, is that your plan, 30 stores? Or have, you got, have you got a plan as to where you're heading size-wise or have you not got there yet? Um, well, we, we want to keep growing, but we, we're very mindful of um, we don't want to come off as too commercial. Um, we kind of want to be very boutique um, in building our brand. Um, so I guess like the easy comparison is we don't want to become like a brand like Donut King, for example, where it's become kind of like too commercial and we kind of lose that authenticity. Um, so we do want to grow. Um, I think we'll do a, a few more stores in Melbourne um, and then hopefully go into state and see where that takes us. Yeah, it sounds like you've got some uh, some good goals there, which is awesome. Ha- have you um, got any tips or advice for anybody else who's thinking about starting a business? Any you know newbies that are going, you know what, I'm 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 really keen to do something, but I haven't uh, taken that plunge yet. What would your three bits of advice be? Mm, uh, it would definitely be just do it, <laughs> because <laughs> you know if you keep waiting and waiting and thinking about your idea, someone else is going to do it. Um, so you have to take that step and just do it. Sometimes it also, you know, you have to just put your foot in the door first and then figure it out later because um, that sometimes that's what it takes to, to get you to do it. Um, so, yeah, definitely just, just do it. Um, and another thing I found was saying yes to opportunities because for me it, it has always been one opportunity has led to another opportunity. Um, and <clears throat> there's always been times where I wanted to say no to the opportunity but then ended up saying yes, and I realized, you know, this opportunity had actually led me to this. Um, so, yeah, saying yes to new opportunities is, is good because you never know where it will lead you to, even if it's just a small, you know, donation to a kindergarten. You never know where that will take you. Yeah, so, so sometimes it is those little things that uh, will make up one big thing. So just sometimes you've got to do it. Yeah, that's right. you just got to build it up and see where it goes. Yeah, good tips, good tips. And do you have a mentor or somebody that you work with on a regular basis that's coaching you through this? Um, I, not, not really. I do have my aunt who is, um, she's, she's a very successful businesswoman. Um, so if I do have times where I really unsure about whether or not, I, you know, whether I was lost on, the, on an idea, I'll, she's the first person I'd go to talk to. Um, otherwise, I talk a lot to my mom. I have a very close relationship with my mom now because of this business. Um, but yeah, she's, um, always in the background, just cheering me on and just making sure that um, she's there to you know, support me in the background for morale. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Good on you, mate. So, uh, you know, I want to say congratulations on getting to where you've got. I mean, at the age of 25 to have a business now, uh, that is, uh, it looks like I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to see it up here in Sydney uh, where I'm based uh, not in the not-too-distant future by the sounds of things. And uh, we're well, going to see... 
I'm going to open one right next door to you, so you have to come. <laughs> so I have to have a donut. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I have to eat donuts. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think your donuts look amazing. I'd have to go for the gold, the 24 karat gold one, because that's, that's got me intrigued. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, once again, mate, I want to say thanks so much for coming on to the show. How, how can people find out more? Um, you can uh, check us out on Instagram, so uh, at Goldie Lux Donuts. So that's G O L D. E L U C K S. Um, and donuts is the long, long spelling. So D O U G H N U T S. And it's the same for Facebook. Otherwise, go to our website, which is www.golets.com and you, .au, and you can send someone in Melbourne a gift if you want to. You don't have to be from Melbourne to send a gift. So you can be anywhere in the world. Yeah, which is awesome. And I, uh, I can attest to the, the, the gifts look amazing. And I, I love the text on the outside of the box, that's, box that says, do not resist. <laughs> or, do not resist, yeah. yeah. It's really, it's, it's donut, but do not. Yeah, donut resist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love a good pun. Very, very, very clever, very clever. Well, I'm sure, and, and you're going to hear a dad joke from me now, I'm sure you're going to go on making lots of dough for a long time. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got to keep it, ro- got to keep it rolling. <laughs> got to keep it rolling. Oh, dear. <laughs> they just keep coming out, folks. They just keep coming out. Well, thanks again, mate, for coming on and sharing your story with us. It's been very inspirational, and, uh, and I admire what you're up to there, Philip. Uh, Thank you, Ben. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, my absolute pleasure, mate. All we've got left to do is the 60-second scramble where I ask you some quick questions, you give me some quick answers. Are you ready for that? Bring it on. All right. Clock's starting now. What's the favourite app on your phone? Um, It is probably an app called Counter, which is like my POS um, app. Uh, Counter all your money. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Do you you have a hidden talent? Um, It is probably... Um, oh, running. I'm actually really good at running. Really good at running. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, if, if you've ever got to run away from something. Um, what's the strangest <laughs> thing you've ever eaten? Oh, I had, I had a, um, a pig's, this is going to sound gross. I had a pig's brain in China once at Hot Pots. Oh. Um, and, and it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't good? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Well, they don't like to waste anything over there. Um, yep. What's your biggest addiction? Diet Coke. I, I love Diet Coke. I, I should probably stop drinking Diet Coke, but, um, but yeah, I love a good co- ice cold Diet Coke. Yeah, well, there you go. Everything's all right in moderation, they reckon, so don't have That's too many. Right. <laughs> don't have too many, including donuts, you know, a good in moderation, yep. but I'm sure you'd like people to eat at least, I don't yep. know, a dozen a day. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, thanks again for coming on to the Business Brain Food Show, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. No worries. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Hey, my absolute pleasure. So there you go. There's a chat with young Philip Cooch down there in Melbourne who is building an amazing business there at the age of 25. It's always good to get these young entrepreneurs onto the show and learn a little bit about what they're up to and how they're going about it, uh, especially when it comes to things like using influencers to help market your business. So that's something that a lot of uh, people don't think about. But there's a lot of people out there with huge followings on the internet that can get exposure for your product or service. And as he said, you know, they just want some free donuts. So you know, maybe you've got something you can give away in exchange for them giving your business a plug. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, you can head across to businessbrainfood.com.au and anything that we've talked about, including the link to Philip's online store, is in the show notes. So businessbrainfood.com.au. This is episode 211. Uh, anything that we spoke about, there'll be links of it in the in the show notes for you to click on. And just a reminder, today's show was brought to you by maxmyprofit.com.au. The team at Max My Profit is expanding. And if you're a business coach, advisor, or consultant, or you'd like to be one and you'd like to join a winning team of business accelerators that are helping business owners grow their business, then head to maximoprofit.com.au, click on the About tab and learn about becoming a business accelerator. All right, well, that's it for this week's show. Thanks so much for tuning in. I've been Ben Futrell. You've been absolutely marvellous for listening all the way to the end. Until next week, have a profitable day. Cheerio. You could be larger than-